Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com and today I'm making a very requested Highland Cow plush. If you would like to make him boop or her boop, stick around. As always, please like this video so I know you are here crafting with me. Now we have to talk about this. It's insane how popular these have become in Facebook groups for tear trays, everything. And I'm gonna show you two ways to make them. One, a cow shape with feet, and you get the free pattern. Get it down below. You're gonna make horns and a snout. Now this one is a stand up cow, and it's made with clay and a snout of felt. I forgot to brush her hair, but she's got wild hair right now, but they're super easy to make. Now, I figured out the best pattern, and in doing so, I created a bit more inspiration for you. This is my favorite. This length of fur is my favorite. I also created this little tater tot made out of a child's sock, so let's get talking about supplies. You'll need something for the snout accents. You can use felt, teddy bear eyes, or flat back buttons. The second thing is you can add a cowbell made of polymer clay and a little copper paint. I forgot to use all the ones I made. Now, speaking of polymer clay, we're going to use one quarter of a small pack. So there's like four sections in these. Just roll it into a log, tip the ends, not too fine a point or they'll break off, and then just cut this in half and you're left with two reasonably similarly sized horns. Use 12 gauge wire, press it about only a third of the way in and then cut off maybe two inches or so. Any body style you use will work with these wired ear or wired horns. And then we're just gonna bake them per the package instructions. And one tip, use gravity. Create these little mounds so that you can form your horns and then drape them over the mounds. And the reason I say that is because if you don't, you are running the risk of getting this ugly flat thing on one side of your horns. So we're just gonna bake them, let them cool in the oven, and now it's time to reattach our wire. You can do this one of two ways. One is E6000 and one is hot glue. Just pop those back in. Remember, they're only one third of the way through, so we have a lot of good movement we'll get from them. My clay was pink, because <laughs> that's all I had on hand, so I painted it a parchment bone color with a foam brush, which left these cool striations in it, and then I just put them aside because now we're going to talk about a, another way to make the horns and snout. You can go to the child's craft section and get this really thick foam. Now with that free pattern below, you will trace onto the foam only the front part of the horn, meaning you don't need the flap part. It's indicated on the pattern. You don't even need to trace this with pen. I did that for you. You can actually use your fingernail or a toothpick, which I recommend. Cut it out with an X-Acto knife or scissors. And you can also shape any sharp edges with scissors or sandpaper as well. So you'd cut two of those and just use the pattern to cut one single snout. And that will give you what you need. So third way. Third way to make them is probably my favorite. I do love the clay horns, but this makes everything really cohesive. Put a piece of felt right sides together and pin on a pattern cut it out, making sure you don't make this point too sharp, and then repeat it for a second set of horns. So you have four pieces for the horns, set those aside. Let's make the snout the same way. Again, put the pieces of felt right sides together, pin on the pattern, and then cut it out. Now this is my favorite way, but you let me know in the comments what you wanna try first. All right, you will need a detail tip glue gun. I broke that one, so I had to order a new one. I'll put the link for that below as well. But this is an easy pattern. It's designed that way, but you have to do a thin bead of hot glue. Just put your entire arm and wrist on the table. And when you put the two pieces together, lightly tap it. Then let those curved pieces sit. If you notice, I am starting with just the curved pieces. The reason is, is because that's the only part we can really mess up. So I'm taking my time and really making sure I get a nice even bead of glue. We're just gonna repeat that. And then moving back to the snout, both the snout and the horn pattern for the hot glue will have a stopping point. I urge you to stop there, meaning don't glue past those points because it will be a study in frustration if you do. And I know that because I've made seven of these. 
uh, and it was it was a little bit of work to make sure I could get both the large and small horns with the same pattern. Now, after you've let them dry, I literally go eat lunch or something. You can use hemostats or needle nose pliers. You're just gonna grab the very tip, pull the uh, two flaps down over the entire inside, like the entire horn, and then just pull, okay? You will not pop the seams if you've let them sit really long. I'm just using regular hot glue. I am not using fabric glue. All right, so I am popped that one out the very tip with the pen, and now we're gonna do it again. So I'm gonna show you how easy this is. Now I am right-handed, so I, <laughs> I'm i kind of a fumbling mess when I try anything with my left hand, so I'm gonna move this to my left hand. I'm gonna take these flaps, and you see I'm gonna pull them so the entire pattern goes into those flaps, and then I'm gonna grab those and just pull. Woohoo! Again, rub the seam between your fingers, poke the end out with a pen, and make sure everything is solid. Now we have two matching horns. All right, so for the snout, it's a little bit different. Most people are gonna pull the two pieces away from each other like that, right? And then you maybe tuck in this with your finger and pull. Don't do that. Turn it around away from you and just pull, push the bottom pieces through. We left that piece open so this would be really easy to turn. Now use a pen or your finger or whatever. Roll those seams in between your fingers just to make everything lay flat. There you go. I made two snouts the same way of felt because I'm going to be using my felt, ear, or felt horns and my clay horns. Let's talk body shapes. To make the standing, cut a four inch piece of pool noodle. It's really light and I despise that. So I'm going to create a base out of a round piece of cardboard, a wood ornament, a wood round from the craft store, or even a heart that's a little smaller. It would look cute as hooves. For a sock style body, you can use a men's, woman's, or child's ankle sock, some corks, and we'll talk about the teddy bear eyes and, and stuff in just a second. But we're also gonna need some fur. And I'm going to go in depth in just a second about the fur that you choose. I have both of these on hand, so I'm gonna use them. Let's start with the pool noodle. I will be assembling both of these at the same time to avoid having to make two videos because uh, I have an entire content plan and I was just requested to make this uh, at the drop of a hat. So what we're gonna do is attach our base before we add any weight. Just set that aside and let's move on to our sock body. I am making a very large one. So I'm gonna use one and a quarter cup of poly pellets for weight and then I'm going to lay the sock horizontal on the table so all the weight is at the bottom and I'm going to put fluff or poly fill at the top. So again, I'm going to make a cow style body. So I'm just gonna tie that off, double knot it, add a little hot glue and then pull down the top. Just, I pulled that little extra fluff. So as a reminder, on the top is all fluff, on the bottom is all the weight, okay? Moving back over to our pool noodle, let's add some weight to him. We're going to put in some glue and some rocks, some pebbles, some aquarium gravel, whatever you want. Just make sure there's glue uh, in between each layer so that nothing, you know, like when they move it, it doesn't shake. And now we're just gonna set that aside. This is an extremely long pile of fur, which I'm gonna talk about in a second but this is the easiest way. You're just gonna measure the entire width of it and make sure you have a couple inches at the back or bottom. <laughs> and then you're gonna add hot glue to one side and then to apply the fur, you're going to split the bottom and just, you're only going to start the fur at the bottom and that's the weighted part and that way we'll hide any seams underneath. Okay, so I do make sure both like starting seam and the entire thing, including the ending seam, are really, really well attached. If you sew, you know what I'm about to talk about. So down here, you don't need all this stuff on the side, but you do need a parallelogram pointing outward from the bottom of the cow, the booty, if you will, but save those casts off because we're gonna use them for the face. Now we're going to glue down the side all the way around. And the reason is because we want to hide the fabric backing. And then you're just gonna be gluing on the little Highland cow booty. I don't know of a better way to say it, sorry. Okay, so you can split the fur at the top or you know whatever, just make sure all your seams are down except in the front. You don't need that really well attached. Remember I told you you're gonna need those cast off. 
Create a piece that is a half inch bigger all the way around than your nose or your face. And that way, we're, I'm gonna tell you a couple ways to attach it. So for the pool noodle, you're gonna do the same thing. And you're gonna cut it to the base. You're going to glue it on. If you're new to cutting faux fur, use an X-Acto knife and cut the fur fabric backing only. Now let's talk about fur. I've made seven of these and my favorite fur to use is a one and a half or two inch pile fur. These are long. My entire stash is full of long luscious fur in a thousand different blends. But for these cows, especially if you're gonna put feet on them, having the shorter length pile of fur works out really well. One tip on the uh, pool noodle, do make sure you have a little overhang at the top so that it can really hide that bright colored pool noodle. All right, making sure it's set all the way around, glue down the top, and then do the same thing. You're gonna cut on this one like <laughs> a hair piece. Mm. <laughs> so honestly, again, half an inch around, and that way we can always cover up all these edges and the fabric backing. And again, all I'm doing is just putting hot glue down and folding everything over in just a little bit. Now, after making a lot of these, the first thing you want to apply is the horns, not the hair piece. <laughs> I don't know why I keep laughing. Okay, so what you're gonna do is just Find the center, go to each side, and split the fur to the fabric backing. Use like an X-Acto knife or a pencil to start the hole and then go straight down into the pool noodle. Then bend out the horn. Now, I can tell you whether it's a pool noodle or whether it's a sock body, both of these will work. This style of fixing in those horns. Now, we do need to glue them in place, uh, otherwise your 11 year old will rip them out. And we just do that by splitting the fur around it and then pressing in some glue or uh, adding some glue and then pressing it and holding it until it's set. Press and let it set. Speaking of pressing and letting it set, the only pieces that I've edited out of this video are the baking time for the clay and the holding of everything for the hot glue to dry. This is all real time. All right, so I'm just using a little bit of stuffing and some pliers to stuff it all down in there. Make sure they're evenly stuffed all the way around. Everything looks good. And now we can move on to our snouts. As I mentioned, you can cut a piece of fur. You can use teddy bear eyes, which I'll link below, or you can use flat back buttons. These are matte. They work really well. They got them at Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna get two styles, um, or one style, or one size of the teddy bear eyes and the backer. To attach the buttons, I just glued them on straight. You can absolutely sew them. And for the teddy bear eyes, I actually found it was easier to cut a little hole with the X-Acto knife, pop them in, pull the felt down around these little ridges and then pop on the holder. This thing is not going anywhere. These are really cute. I really like the look of them and I wish that they weren't so shiny, but you could probably sandpaper them if you want the matte look like the buttons. All right, now we add a little stuffing and it's time for this guy's I'm just dropping, I always do that with sock gnomes because I wanna make sure all the weight is at the right place. Okay, the horns. There are these two flaps on this pattern, don't cut them off. You're going to press in whichever one is on that side. So you see how I pressed in the inside one? I'm gonna press in the opposite side because I'm going to use that as a shelf. I have to let those set or they will slide. So let's go back over to the little pool noodle gnome. I split the fur. And this is a preference that you have. I would say don't put the snout at the same level as the horns. It looks a little interesting. If you like that look, do it. No one's gonna tell you what to do. I just think the snout should be a little further down than the horns. I split the fur to the fabric backing, you see that? We want a generous portion of hot glue. Now, you're not gonna see the very top, right up there, that's glued, because we're gonna have hair over it, or fur over it. But now it's time to add our hair piece. <laughs> <laughs> and just glue that on press and hold and then we style but we're gonna put her aside for just a second finish this guy up so as you can see I didn't glue down the top edge of my sock fur sock whatever I am gluing down the into the inside of the fur fabric backing I am adding the glue and the glue to the sock body. And then I'm gonna be gluing down these tabs. That is the most secure way that I have found to make them. Now the face. The face on these can be made a few different ways. I'm gonna show you my two favorites. The first one is to create one piece 
cut a slit in it and pop the snout through there, okay? That's the easiest to me, it looks great. But you can also cut the piece of fur that you measured, that bigger piece of fur, and you can cut it in half. So what I'm gonna do is measure where I want that snout to pop out, I'm going to piece on the fur around it. So I put the bottom on first, close it up, and then put the snout on. And again, you won't be able to see the top piece. It's time to now glue down the hair piece. And do make sure you get all the sides. So I put it over the edges of my horns, making sure it's all glued down everywhere. And then this guy could be done, but we're gonna give him some feet. So we flop him over and cut two corks in half. I tried a couple of different things. The corks work the best. They're also forgiving. So I went just right of center. You don't need to space them really far out, by the way. Just make sure you um, don't widen, don't make them too wide. All right, so you can split the fur back here. I, you can see my fabric backing, so I didn't. And then I decided a few paper flowers for the crowns for each of these. You can use anything, charms, flowers, uh, silk flowers, these are paper from the craft store, but always start in the middle so that you can blend, you know, like bring it out to where everything is even. These were tiny little wired ones. I cut off most of the wire and then popped those on. And now you style it at a cowbell if you made them. And let me know down below, what do you think? Also down below is that free pattern. Thank you so much for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafty fun.